All right, let's begin. This is unit 10, uh, and this is dealing with uh, proportions and things like that. All right, so here we go. Let's start. A political scientist surveys 35 of the current 104 representatives in state Congress. What is the size of the sample? And the other one was the size of the population. All right, and so these are all pretty simple. So um, again, what a population is, Population is everybody that you would want to know about, okay? Writing and speaking at the same time. All right, so the population is everybody that you want to know about, every, every single individual that you'd want to know about. And then what a sample is, is when you just take part of that. All right, so... For instance, in this situation, there is 104 grand total representatives. Okay, there's 104 grand total representatives. And I sampled, and it just so happens to be 35 of them. All right, so what is the size of the sample? The sample size was 35. What's the population? That's 104. population is everybody's sample is what you're looking at. All right, so a political scientist surveys, so they're asking 30 out of the 118. So 30, 118, pretty straightforward. Asks 29 of the current 106, so 29, 106, very, very simple. All right, here we go. Uh, the city of Raleigh has uh, 1,300, or say 13,500 registered voters. Uh, there were two candidates for city council in the upcoming election, Brown and Feliz. Uh, the day before the election, the uh, telephone poll, uh, uh, a telephone poll of 300 randomly selected registered voters was conducted, and 135 said they vote for Brown. 145 said they vote for Feliz and 20 were undecided. All right, um, if I remember correctly, these numbers might not add up. So what I, uh, uh, what I encourage you to do is take a look at this. So what I'm saying is this. So 135 said they vote for Brown. 145 said they vote for Feliz. And then 20 were undecided. All right, so again, double check that grand total. I know I changed it on some of the papers, but it wasn't changed on others. So just note, yeah, that there are 300 total in this situation. Okay, so that checks out. All right, now I'm gonna keep this. Right here. All right. And so now how do you answer these next three questions? Well, it's very similar to uh, labels of last chapter. So for instance, we're looking for brown. So in for brown, I see that 135 said brown out of a grand total of 300. Okay. Now, I apply this to the population, which is 13,500 total. So notice how the label of total, total people, drop out, and this would just remain with brown voters. So 135 divided by 300 times 13,500. Okay, 135. Out of 300, 13,500. That comes out to be 6,075. Cool, cool, cool. All right, uh, same question, uh, but this time we're looking for fleets. So that would be 145 of 300. Now apply this to 13,500 total. 
So I see that the label total drops and this will be what it is. All right, one more time. All right, so now we're looking for how many are still undecided. So that would be 20 out of 300 total. I changed the total now to 13500 and see how that proportion applies. Let's see how that, that works out. 20 out of the 300 times 13500. There it is. Okay, these problems continue on. Again, double check that initial number. I know, as I said, I know I changed, I fixed my mistake eventually, but it may not have made it onto the specific worksheet that you're dealing with. Um, so heads up about that. Okay, so here we go. City of Raleigh has 18,250. Let's go ahead and see how our election is going on this one. So on this election, uh, 215, so they vote for Brown. Um, 185 and 120, 215, 185, and 120. Okay, it does come out to be 520 again. Double check that uh, so you don't accidentally use an incorrect number. So just add it up and then go, go ahead to work with, with your numbers here. All right. So now uh, what is, how many of those 18, uh, 250 are going to vote for Brown? So right now I know that uh, 215 out of 520, so I play that, apply that to a bigger, bigger total than the 520 and see what that proportion would be. Okay, so here we're going to be coming up with the decimal answer. And so 7, 5, 4, 5.6, 7 ish. Okay, all right, so take that to the whole person. So I see that this would round up. So 7, 5, 4, 6 would be my official answer on that. Okay, go with Lee's. So that would be 185 out of the 520. Apply that to the 18250. See that the label total drops. 185. So six. Four nine two point seven eight ish. So that's going to round up. So six four nine three. All right. Last but not least, uh, the undecideds. So that's one hundred and twenty are undecided of the five hundred twenty. Apply that to the eighteen two fifty. So again, because that's 0.5, it still rounds up, 4, 2, 1, 2. Now, I do understand that if you add up these numbers, it 
that it doesn't come out to the 18,250 like it said it should. However, again, how do you count a half a person kind of idea? And so um, that's where the error comes in. But just go, just go ahead and write what your answers would be. So, because I can't definitively say, oh, one person belongs here and not someplace else. So just give your rounded answers and it's all good. All right, same, same question one more time. Uh, so we have 105 for Brown, 125 Belize, and 70 are undecided. So 300. Okay. And then let's go to work. All right, so we're looking for brown. So that's 105 said brown out of 300 total. So the total is much larger now. And so what would it be out of the 10 to 50? All right, so again, if you add those up, I believe that's too much, but um, again, it is what it is. All right. All right, uh, observational study or an experiment. Okay, um, what the difference is. An observational study is where you literally you don't introduce anything to uh, to the environment. You're just, in, in essence, what I what I look at it as is you're sitting on a park bench with a clipboard, just doing do, taking like taking numbers, like you know, uh, you know, you're looking at things that you don't inter introduce anything weird to the environment. We're an experiment. You naturally change the flow of nature. You change the flow of nature. Nature just won't happen to work out this way. So like you introduce a new uh, element to the environment and then that's an experiment. So you could be like introducing a drug to a body. You could be introducing, you know, like music to a classroom. You could, uh, you could be manipulating the environment to see what's the difference between this and that, all right? Where an observation is, again, you just sit on the side and you just observe what's happening. All right, so a group of friends changed their brand of uh, energy drink uh, to see if it made them feel different. So they changed it, they changed it on purpose. 
Okay, so they changed it on purpose. This is an experiment. They changed their brand of energy drink on purpose. It just wouldn't have worked out that way. Crying white noise while sleeping uh, provides more REM sleep. All right, so again, you introduce this white noise. You're seeing if it makes a difference. Um, so like there's a control group and there's an experiment group. Control group means like what would happen if nothing happened. And this white noise is the experiment. So okay, the rate, uh, the growth rate of bacteria before and after adding alcohol. That's an experiment. The bacteria just won't uh, decide to add alcohol to their environment. They, you're introducing it to something. You're changing nature. All right. So, in observ as I said, an observational study is something like um, you go to the mall and you see how many people, uh, you know, have blonde hair, or you sit on a park bench and you see the behavioral patterns of pigeons, or something like that. You you you're, you don't do anything. You're just watching what is already taking place. You didn't do anything. You're just watching nature in its in its natural environment. 